Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 748. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 740-752, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Excel Magic Trick section. Hey, uh, I'm shooting these videos full screen here, so you might want to click the uh, maximize button on the videos. Hey, here's our situation. We have some dates and some events, either yes or no, and we need to count all of the days on the weekend where we don't have an event. So in essence it's two criteria. It's either Saturday or Sunday and it's no. So we can see there's a count of one here, two, three, etc. Now we're going to start with a vertical array and then we'll do a horizontal array and we'll run into a complication and then we'll also look at how to do it for days other than Saturday and Sunday. Now the first trick here is we're going to have to get inside of our formula if we're counting a string of um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then we're going to have to say, is it Saturday and Sunday? So the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to start with the indirect function. The indirect function can take a reference that is text and convert it to an actual reference. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to say, hey, take this and then join symbol, shift 7, ampersand, in text, colon, end double quote, and then join the last uh, cell there in our date range. Now what this does is if you highlight this and hit the F9 key, it creates what? A text string? Well sure, anytime you concatenate using the join symbol it creates text. But what is it doing here? It's creating this number to this number. Well these are dates, these are serial numbers, so that's the serial number for that. That's the serial number for that other one. Ah, but what we'd like is to have that as a reference and then use the row function and the row function will be able to extract from these two bookend numbers all of the serial numbers for the date. I'm going to control Z. Row function will do that just fine. Row function says, hey, give me the row. Uh, by the way, indirect will convert that text. If I hit F9, it's too big because when you ask it to show all the rows, it shows all the rows and it's too big. But we could see now if we highlight this, it'll give us our numbers. That's our desired result. So that's a st um, an array of our numbers. Now we can control Z and say, hey, give me the weekday. Now the weekday function is great. It, it'll tell you uh, what weekday 1 to 7. Now our particular version we're going to use here is that one and then return comma 2. Now in 2010 I'm using it has this amazing new drop down which tells you exactly numbers 1 to 7 Monday to 7 totally worth getting uh, Excel 2007. And notice all the different options we have here, right? So I'm going to use uh, 2. Close parentheses. Now if we highlight this, it'll give us our string F9, our array of, oh, numbers. And we're interested in Saturday and Sunday, which are 6 and 7. So Control-Z, we simply say any time that is greater than 5, which is Friday. And now we get a string of trues and falses. F9, there they are. True, true, false, 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 so we can see our true, true. Control Z. Now we need some ones and zeros here, so I'm going to put double negative to convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros. That's only our first um, array here. We need to multiply this by an array of trues and falses for is there a no. So I'm going to Control Z. Put sum product. Sum product can multiply arrays. You can already see we have an array of trues and falses. I'm going to come to the end comma, double negative to convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros, and then highlight this column. Uh-oh, I can already see there's a problem. Oh, no, there it is. Equals in double quotes, no, not Kate Setsenov. Close parentheses, close parentheses. Now that'll work just fine. And we'll just hit enter and we'll see that there are four. And in fact, if you count them, there are four. But I want to take a look at these two arrays because when we switch over and try and do it on columns, it's going to be a problem. Let's highlight this array right here, F9. Semicolons mean row. And then this one right here, 
F9, semicolons mean row. And all that means is the trues and falses are spread across rows. When we come up and do this one right here, we're going to run into a problem that one of the arrays will be columns, which are commas, and one of them will be semicolons, and it won't work. Now, this I've hard-coded this in, so I'm going to click Escape. I do not want to hard-code and then there. I want to leave that there. Actually, before we go and do the column one, I would like to go down here and just look. What if we wanted to count, uh, so Monday and Tuesday, right? Those were our holidays. Well, let's just see what the week equals week day. I'm going to click right there, comma, two. And you can just see it delivers a 1, 2, whatever. Oh, well, wait a second. Monday, Tuesday, that means we could just have to switch this formula less than 3, right? Or whatever. You know, and so that's all we did in this one. We uh, Now we're counting the number of times we have no events scheduled on Monday and Tuesday. And so uh, the, the answer is 2. And if you count through them, it's true. Now remember, the nice thing about this, this new weekday is oh, that in 2000 and uh, 10, just amazing. Now let's come up here. I'm going to try and do this quickly. Row, indirect, and then this. Ampersand, double quote, colon. And then I'm going to click there and control end arrow to get all the way to the end and then scroll back. So I have all of my serial numbers. I need to then wrap this in weekday. Comma 2. And then I need to say uh, some product. And I'm going to do this one here. Anytime that is equal to no, I need to come over here and put a double negative. All right, so now I have my almost my two trues and falses. And we'll see the problem that we have here. This one was greater than 5, because 5 is Friday. All right, so we have our two strings right there and right there. And if we highlight these, notice this thing is looking across columns. So when we hit F9, we have commas. I'm going to undo that because I don't want to hard code this, Control Z. And when I come over here and highlight this one and hit F9, those are semicolons. Now semicolons and which are rows and commas, which are columns, can be multiplied. In general, you have to do Control, do multiplication simple and use Control Shift Enter, not some product. But Control Z, uh, we don't want that um, because it'll give us totally the wrong answer. Because when you multiply uh, arrays that are not the same dimension, it's it's a whole another thing. It's not just multiplying single cell times single cell and adding. So no problem. We need to come in here. These are all F9. The semicolons just just convert these to rows. Control Z using the transpose. So on the inside here, the thing that's causing it is the row function. So right there, if we just F9, you could see, oh yeah, those are the semicolons. So Control Z, Control Z to undo it, transpose. Now one thing about transpose is you have to use Control Shift Enter. Uh, it's a good lesson about some product. If you put something inside of some product, even though that argument right there can handle array, it's only if it's directly in that argument. This is trumping that. This requires Control Shift Enter. So now if we control shift enter which i'm not even going to do once i you have a formula that has to have control shift enter i'm not going to use some product i'm going to use some and then control shift enter and that's totally wrong there's not 14 there what do we do there oh yeah when we switch over to some we need to go like this get rid of all that and that and we got to do uh, formal array uh, multiplying here. We're going to take that array, and we don't need the double negatives because these are trues and falses, right? Right here, F9, and so are the other ones for that matter, Control C. But once you multiply, you're doing an operation, and any operation, whether double negative or multiplying one or actual multiplying two arrays, we'll go ahead and convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros. Control Shift Enter. And we have the same data set as we do here. Um, 
So there you go, how to count weekends that don't have events scheduled, whether in uh, columns, rows, or whether you have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or whatever. All right, see you next trick.